In this video, we're going to have a deep dive into the world of spark plugs. So there's a lot of confusion and misinformation out there about spark plugs. A lot of people are wasting money buying what they perceive as a performance spark plug, when in reality, they're not going to see any performance advantage, and it may actually affect the reliability of the car. We're going to be looking at electrode designs, the materials they're made of, the layout of the electrodes on the spark plug. We're also going to discuss hot plugs and cold plugs and help you decide which would be most appropriate for you and your use of the car. So the spark plug is really key to having good combustion in a gasoline petrol powered car. It's the thing that ignites the fuel and starts the burn. So having a good strong spark makes a big difference to the performance. So will making the spark jump a longer gap improve the performance of the engine? Well, we have seen results where the gap has been enlarged and we have seen increased power and response from the engine. So there certainly is an element of truth to the fact that a larger gap will increase the size of the spark and that will help you to raise the power output of the engine. But the downside of doing that is that the larger gap is more prone to failure. So as the plugs start to deteriorate, the spark requires more energy to jump that larger gap. And if things aren't ideal, you won't get the spark happening or you'll get an intermittent spark, which will cause misfires and all sorts of problems in the engine. So the gap is actually quite important to get that right. You want to be thinking about the reliability of the car. If you're in a motorsport environment and you change the plugs every time you go out and use the car, it doesn't really matter. You're not looking to retain long-term reliability. But for most of us who are using our cars every single day, we do need to retain that little bit of reliability. Just by making sure those gaps are not excessive. So gone are the days really where we had to reset the gap on the spark plugs. Most plugs from the factory nowadays are set at appropriate gaps and work really well. There's not very much perception in the need to adjust the gap in the modern spark plugs. One of the most important things to discover about spark plugs is the differences between a hot plug and a cold plug. You might think that one automatically gives you better performance, but the hot plug tends to run hotter. The advantage of that is because it's hotter, it is less likely to have carbon building up on the nose and the electrode of the spark plug itself. So that can aid the long term reliability of the engine. But the downside to having a hot electrode is that the electrode can become too hot and can prematurely ignite the fuel as it goes into the engine. So you don't want a plug that runs too hot. And that's often the problem that people run into when they start tuning the engine and everything in the engine is running much hotter and the plugs really start to struggle. A cold plug, on the other hand, is very good at dissipating the heat that builds up in the tip of the plug. So it runs cooler. The advantage to that is you don't have that risk of premature ignition because the spark plug tip is too hot. The downside of that is it is more prone to fouling. Carbon can build up more easily. The heat in the plug isn't sufficient to keep burning off that carbon as it starts to form. And you can have problems with long-term reliability. So choosing an appropriate plug for your specific application is critical. If you're just using the car every single day, there's going to be a lot of carbon buildup. You're using a wide range of operating temperatures. Then a hotter plug is obviously the choice that you would need to go to. But if you tune the engine, you're using it in a performance environment and you're starting to have problems with premature ignition or it's backing off a little bit just to prevent that premature ignition from happening or you're getting detonation or other problems inside the engine, then running a cooler spark plug can actually give you that little bit more leeway to actually work with. So choosing a hot and cold plug it's not just a matter of saying that one is more of a performance plug than the other. It really is the key that you need to understand why these plugs are hot and cold, what the difference is, and choose one that's appropriate. So most people will actually just drop a little bit in the temperature of the plug. So we're not just going out and buying a hot plug or a cold plug. There is a range of temperatures to choose from. So just dropping down one notch is often enough in a performance project to give you the benefit of both worlds and have the reliability long term and also the performance advantages that you get. So the hot spark plug has a longer nose. So the tip protrudes further into the combustion chamber. And as a result of that, it runs hotter. The greater distance means the heat isn't dissipated as effectively. And the cold plug has a shorter electrode tip. So the heat is dissipated very much more readily and much more quickly from the tip of the plug. Let's look at the materials they use to make electrodes. So traditionally it always used to be copper, but now we're seeing platinum and iridium being used. So copper is relatively cheap. It's a good conductor of electricity, but the downside is it's fairly short lifespan. It tends to degrade very, very quickly over time. So most performance manufacturers now have switched over to other more exotic metal formulations like platinum and iridium. 
iridium. Now, they do cost a lot more money, but they're much more resistive to carbon building up. The electrodes tend to be finer, so you get more chance of the intake charge igniting around them. There's not a lot of stuff there baffling the initial part of the flame as it comes out from the spark plug. So they do cost more, but they do tend to last a lot longer. Some manufacturers are quoting change intervals of about 40,000 miles for these iridium and platinum tipped spark plugs, whereas copper plugs traditionally were replaced almost every year, every 12,000 miles, and sometimes even shorter than that. So let me know in the comments what your experience has been with different plug materials, whether you feel it's worth paying the extra money for a good quality plug that lasts a long time. So the other thing to think about is the electrode design. So we see various designs with multiple electrodes. Now bear in mind that you are only going to get one spark. Three electrodes does not mean you get three sparks. Electricity always takes the shortest path between two points. So the advantage of having multiple electrodes is the consistency over time. There's more surface area on the electrode. So as one becomes fouled up, the spark will jump to another electrode. So you've got a little bit of longevity in there, but you've got to remember that you're actually stifling the flame slightly. So each electrode is actually effectively covering the spark slightly. So instead of having a nice open 355 degrees, you've only got 300 degrees around the actual electrode itself for the combustion process to start. So it's an insignificant difference, but it's not generally worth, in my opinion, buying these multiple electrode spark plugs. So some electrodes just have one tip, but there's a split at the end. So the split at the end will do the same thing as multiple electrodes and just allow a longer lifespan. And it gives a wider surface area for the spark to jump across so it stands a better chance of getting a decent ignition on the engine. Some spark plugs have a V-shaped configuration, others have a U-shaped configuration, but the spark plug itself performs an essential role in the combustion process. So choosing the right spark plug is really critical for your performance project. So if you've changed substantially the engine, its configuration, the temperatures it's running at, it's time to think about upgrading the spark plugs to a better alternative, maybe running with one or two steps cooler on the actual spark plug itself. If you're getting any kind of ignition problem or misfire is often down to the spark plugs. Now, when you remove the spark plugs, just looking at the condition of them will tell you a lot about the condition of the engine. So if they're particularly sooty or oily, or you can see tracking across the electrode insulators, you know that there's going to be some sort of problem in the engine. It's running too rich, for example, or maybe it's running lean if there's a lot of very gray ash on the spark plug itself. So I'm going to do another video in the future that goes through the different colors you get on the spark plug. But it's very interesting just to be aware of what's going on in the engine and how you can diagnose problems by looking at the condition of the spark plugs as they're removed from the engine. So I really hope this video has been useful to you. Please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find really interesting if you want to get the best performance out of your car. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so because I'd love you to stay tuned. Thanks for watching.